Okay, so thank you for the introduction. So blind signature schemes are two body protocols where a user can obtain a signature on some message from a signer in such a way that um, the signer does not, uh, cannot link the resulting message signature pair to the signing process. And these are important building blocks for e-voting, e-cache, and one-show attribute-based credentials. So the motivation behind this talk was um, uh, that round optimal blind signatures are notoriously hard to construct in the standard model. And so far in over 30 years of research and in, out of um, over 50 uh, different constructions, only two of them are in the standard model. And these two constructions make heavy use of, of complexity leveraging and are therefore uh, practically inefficient. So the main difficulty here seems to be the malicious key model where the adversary uh, fully determines uh, the public key and the reduction has no access to the secret key. And this is even underlined by some impossibility result by Fischl and Schröder, uh, which determines certain criteria um, for schemes under um, which uh, it is impossible to find a reduction from the unforgeability of a blind signature scheme to non-interactive uh, assumptions. Oh, and okay, so why is round optimality desirable? Uh, it's first an important measure for efficiency, and secondly, it automatically gives concurrent security, which has to be dealt with um, otherwise um, if uh, it is not um, round optimal. Okay, so what we uh, will see in this talk is uh, firstly a new way to build round optimal blind signatures, and we are going to build them from structure preserving signatures and equivalence classes which have been introduced at uh, last Asia Crypt. And this is the first practically efficient uh, standard model construction, and we will also give an extension to partially blind signatures. And we can, uh, will also show how to build one-show ABCs um, in the standard model uh, using a similar approach. Uh, here, there is, however, one main caveat, namely that blindness is, um, holds under an interactive uh, variant of the DDH assumption. And secondly, the second part uh, will focus on new results on, on structure preserving signatures on equivalence classes, um, SPSEQ. So we will see a first, uh, but in some way restricted standard model construction. We will see that SPSEQ implies ordinary structure preserving signatures. And this also means that optimality criteria determined by Arbital carry over to um, SPSEQ as well. So throughout this talk, we will uh, need um, type 3 bilinear uh, groups. And uh, I will denote uh, the generator of group G1 by P and um, the generator of group G2 by P hat. And we will also talk about structure preserving signatures. Uh, these are signature schemes defined on bilinear groups, which allow us to sign group element vectors. Uh, signatures and bubble keys are, again, uh, group elements. And verification is just done by uh, the evaluation of pairing product equations and group membership tests. Okay, so what does it mean when we uh, talk about signing equivalence classes? Uh, when we've got a prime order uh, group G um, and consider G to the L, then we can uh, define a projective equivalence classes on G to the L, this, uh, which are lines uh, going through uh, zero uh, without containing the zero um, vector itself. So um, in other words, two um, elements M and N fall into the same class if they, uh, one is a multiple of the other. And a uh, signature scheme defined on such equivalence classes um, has the functionality that once we obtain a signature on one representative of such a class, we can obtain uh, arbitrary signatures on, uh, signatures on arbitrary other representatives of the same class. So and if the DDH assumption holds on the underlying group, then we get some sort of indistinguishability notion uh, defined on the classes for free. So um, like ordinary structure preserving signatures, SPSEQ um, have a bilinear group generation algorithm, a key generation algorithm, a signing algorithm, and a verification algorithm. And additionally, we've got an algorithm which performs uh, the change of representatives um, by taking input a message signature pair, and this as output this uh, algorithm then uh, outputs a signature for another representative of the same class, depending on some scalar mu, which is used for, sweet, for um, choosing the other representative. Okay, so uh, what about the security properties? We have got uh, correctness, ERFCMA security, and uh, basic notion 
for the distribution of signatures, which we, uh, we termed class hiding, and which we are going to supersede with other uh, notions subsequently. Um, this notion says that um, a random message signature pair coming from one class we have already seen is indistinguishable from random message signature pairs. And EUFCMA security is uh, here defined with respect to equivalence classes. So it's, uh, the game requires that the adversary outputs have forgery M star, sigma star, such that the message M star defines an equivalence class different from all um, the equivalence classes defined through the queries. So um, now um, uh, we need some properties during this talk for the signature distribution, um, which are stronger than class hiding. So um, the first one is perfect adaption of signatures. It demands that an adapted uh, signature uh, has the same distribution as a freshly issued signature. And an even stronger notion is perfect adaption of malicious keys, where we just require that the signature output by the change wrap algorithm is a uniform element in the space of signatures on the updated representative under the same public key. Okay, so um, now let's talk about the blind signature construction. So uh, it is black box from any SPS CQ, EUFC may secure, uh, perfectly adapting SPS CQ, and blind under an interactive variant of the DDH assumption, the malicious key model. And we can also prove blindness in the honest key model under the DDH assumption. So the basic idea here is uh, to use that the user at first compiles a Peterson commitment to some message M using a commitment key Q, which is part of the um, signer's public key. Then uh, sends an arbitrary uh, element of the equivalence class defined by uh, the normalized representative holding the commitment C in the first component. And as I said, it's normalized so the it holds the generator uh, of group G1 in the second component, obtains a signature on this and from the signer, and then using the change wrap algorithm, so the, this inherent property of SPSEQ, uh, the um, user can derive a signature on the original um, normalized representative. So the user then finally outputs a signature plus a modified opening of the Peterson commitment. So in more detail, um, at first the, the user holds a message and the, um, the signer um, has a public key and a secret key. And next to, um, besides containing the SPSEQ, secret key and public key, these two keys uh, contain additional values. The secret key contains a scalar Q, uh, which is the commitment trapdoor, and two values Q and Q hat, uh, which we uh, are the Basically, which is basically the commitment key. And we require here the second value Q hat, which is in G2 for a modified opening of the Peterson commitment. So at first then, um, as I said before, the user um, compiles a Peterson commitment by choosing some randomized R and using the commitment uh, key Q and extends this to a vector with uh, the generator of G1 in the second component chooses at random some scalar s, which uh, the user uses to choose an arbitrary representative of the class defined by um, this normalized representative, gets back a signature p on the blinded message, of the so-blinded message, is able to run the change wrap algorithm in order to obtain a signature on the normalized representative, so the unblinded message, and then outputs a signature tau holding uh, the signature sigma, and two values R and T for a modified opening of the Peterson commitment. So when a verifier is then given message M and signature tau, the verifier first uh, um, recomputes the Peterson commitment using the value T, and then checks whether the corresponding normalized representative of the class um, verifies under sigma. And additionally, the verifier has to check whether the discrete logs contained in the value t with respect to based at p are um, r times q, and does so by uh, using this. Okay, does so by using these two pairings here. Okay, so uh, what about the security of this scheme? It's unfortunate under the EUFCMA security of the SPSEQ, 
and uh, diffie hellman inversion assumption. And blind under, as I've already said, under an interactive variant of the DDH assumption, the malicious key model. So throughout this talk, I will focus on the blindness proofs and as the unfortunability proofs are rather straightforward. So um, as a warm-up, I'm going to talk about how to prove blindness in the honest key model. And here I will uh, give an idea of the experiment. So um, here, the, in, uh, in order to prove blindness, the addresser is in the role of a signer. And the experiment at first picks at random a bit B and uh, runs uh, the adversary on a key pair SKPK. So then the adversary outputs two, uh, uh, two messages, M0 and M1, and is given one-time access to uh, two user oracles, depending um, one for a message MB and one for message M1 minus B. Okay, and finally, the adversary has to output a bit B star and wins the game if B equals B star. And if one interaction uh, fails, then we uh, set both uh, resulting signatures re uh, which result from the user oracle to bot. Okay, so how to, uh, we, we uh, proved this now by a sequence of games. The original game, um, game zero is the original game, and as you can see here, the values which in front of the commitment key Q, which are um, color blue here, um, are the randomizer for the commitment and the blinding value S. And now in game one, uh, we uh, exchange these for, for, the, um, for, the sec uh, for the first user oracle with some random value T. And uh, we do so in game two for the second user oracle. So in game uh, two, both messages are perfectly hidden from the adversary then. So and under the DDH assumption, then game zero is computationally indistinguishable from game one, and so is game one from game two. Now how to simulate uh, the uh, user oracle? Uh, we do so by embedding a DDH instance and perform the blinding and unblinding with respect to this DDH instance. And since we've got access to the commitment trapdoor, we can uh, recompute the blinded message with respect to this DDH instance. Now, how can we uh, perform the unblinding and obtain a signature on the unblinded um, message? Uh, we perform the unplanning with respect to the other parts of the DDH instance, and as we've got access to the secret key, we can recompute a fresh signature on this unblinded message. So, of course, we have to uh, take care of the distribution of this uh, um, signature, and perfect adaption, the perfect adaption property guarantees us that it is identically distributed um, to some signature uh, output by the change trap algorithm. So um, now if the T in the DDH instance equals R times S, then we have simulated game zero and otherwise we have simulated game one. Now um, what about proving blindness in the malicious key model? Here the public key, as I've said before, is fully determined by the adversary and the reduction has no access to the secret key. The rest of the experiment stays the same. Okay, so um, what we at first have to do is we have to replace the perfect adaption uh, property by perf the perfect adaption of malicious keys property. And then the second problem we are facing is that uh, we can no longer embed the DDH instance since Q and Q hat are fully determined by the adversary and we don't have access to the commitment trapped or scalar Q. So uh, what we can do now is replace the DDH assumption by an interactive uh, variant of the DDH assumption, which is relative to Q and Q hat. But still, uh, um, for the unplanning, we can't recompute a, a fresh signature then. But what we can do is we can use the adversary A um, assigning Oracle by rewinding the experiment. So what does the, this interactive DDH variant I was talking about look like? So the adversary first outputs uh, Q and Q hat, which come from G1 and G2, and are required to contain the same discrete logs which we can uh, check efficiently using two pairings. So um, then uh, the adversary has to decide whether when it is given RP, RQ, SP, and TQ, whether the T in there is random or the product of uh, R and S. And this assumption is hard in the generic group model. Okay, so... Um, now I'm going to sketch how the proof uh, in the malicious key model looks like. So um, as I've said before, we use rewinding, so we've got two runs. 
for uh, simulating one oracle. And in the first run, we uh, perform the blinding and unblinding honestly by picking a scalar S prime at random. And due to the knowledge of S prime, we can then uh, uh, run change wrap and obtain a signature from the, uh, on the normalized representative from the uh, signature returned by the adversary. So after uh, we have derived the signature sigma b, um, which uh, we store, um, we rewind the experiment to the step before uh, the blinding uh, randomizer S prime has been chosen. So then uh, in the second run, we hold the signature obtained in the first run, sigma b, and we perform the blinding and unblinding with respect to the interactive DDH instance, um, similar to uh, to the way we have done it before with the DDH um, instance in the honest key model. Okay, then uh, we send a blinded message, which is uh, for which we use for which um, computation we use the uh, interactive DDH instance to the um, signer get back a signature p uh, prime b, um, which we can discard, and then the adversary finally um, outputs a uh, signature tau containing sigma b from the first run and two uh, values r and t um, for the modified opening which are also stem from the interactive DDH instance. So, um, so far we don't know any um, standard model SPSEQ construction which we can use to instantiate this blind signature scheme so, uh, and we only know, uh, know a generic group model construction and when we instantiate the scheme with this construction, then the user and designer algorithms just need a few scalar multiplications and verification is just done by evaluating seven pairings and one scalar multiplication. Okay, so uh, how about partially blind signatures? Um, in order to build partially blind signatures in a similar way, we just extend the vector length from two to three and use the additional component to include the common information. And we can, in a similar way, we can also build one-show ABCs by exchanging the Peterson commitment for a generalized Peterson commitment, which allows us to uh, commit to message vectors and additionally during issuing and showing we need proofs of knowledge over the attributes. So um, we also have got some new details on SPSEQ, namely uh, we know that SPSEQ uh, implies ordinary structure preserving signatures and we do so by, when we want to sign a vector uh, M, we additionally include a, a component holding the generator. And so we restrict uh, each class to one valid representative. And this is just like the standard UFCMA security of structure presenting signatures. Then. And this also means that the optimality criteria determined by Arbeit I'll carry over to SPSEQ. So we can't do better than having three signature elements coming from both groups, G1 and G2 and we need at least two pairing product equations for verification. And furthermore, it also means that uh, for optimally short uh, SPSEQs, there is no uh, reduction to any non-interactive assumption, uh, which also means that the generic group model construction uh, so far um, is optimal in the sense, so we, we, can't, uh, we can only prove it in the generic group model. Okay, so uh, what about the standard model construction? Um, uh, as I've said before, it's a rather restricted construction since it is only class hiding. And we derive it by using a trick of Arbeit al, where we include two uh, random, ele uh, uh, random elements uh, into two additional random elements into the messages, which uh, we then sign um, additionally and include into the signatures. And the, this EOFC uh, proof is more involved than the one by Arbeit al. Okay, so now I'm going to conclude this talk. So what we've seen is a new way to build uh, efficient round optimal blind signatures and how to derive partially blind signatures, one show, ABCs, um, and all of these constructions are uh, secure in the standard model. And we've also seen some new results on SPSEQ, a standard model construction, new properties, and that SPSEQs imply ordinary structure preserving signatures. So thank you for your attention.